So let's, let's read the scripture first and we'll build from there. How to know if he or she really loves you. It's one of the most common questions I actually receive. People just say, oh, pastor, how do I know this man loves me? I still receive that question yesterday night. Yes. Somebody still asked me yesterday night, that pastor, how do I know if a guy loves me? Or how do I know if a girl loves me? They are usually telltale signs. And I'm going to run through some of them for you. So that you won't enter one chance with somebody that is just a time waster. I get what I'm saying. And another reason why this teaching is going to be important is that some people actually think what they have is love. They might think what they have for somebody is love. So today we'll be able to examine if you really love this person or not. And if the person in your life also loves you or not, you will know. Even if you are married, this will help you know that you are being a good husband or a good wife. But you can also step up your own game based on some of these principles. These principles are probably not exhaustive. This means that there might be more signs, but these are the few. I, I'm doing seven for each male and female. These are the ones I feel are quite important and quite common. All right? Second Samuel chapter 13. Let's start from there. Second Samuel chapter 13. I'm going to be reading from the NIV version. So I was saying some things some people feel is not even love. You think it's love. And the challenge is that love is one of the most misunderstood, misconstrued, misrepresented, you know, words ever. So somebody saying, I love you, I love you. When he enters into the marriage, you will not find that he doesn't really love the person. If everybody that is divorced today at one time thought they loved the person they are divorced with now. Do you understand? At one time, they thought, I love this girl. I love this boy. And after a while, it changed to, I hate this boy. I hate this girl. So, you need to even be able to know if what you are feeling is love. It's not all feelings that you have that is love. And what happens to people, because some of them are not very experienced or knowledgeable, they just, they equate every feeling they have as love. You see one boy, you're, you're having fever, you say it's love. It's coronavirus. Because you just saw one boy, you say, hey, pastor, as I see the boy, I was shaking. I love him. It's not love. There are many other things that resemble love, but are not love. Say, I just love him. He, how, do I, how do you know? Uh, whenever I'm cooking, I'm thinking about him, I forget the food born. I love him. <laughs> some of those things are infatuation. Some are obsession. It's not necessarily some are just sexual attraction. It's not love. You will have these feelings for many people throughout your life, but it's not necessarily love. But we'll look at a few signs that you used to know if it's love. Because the challenge is some people don't even know if they love somebody or not. So we'll look at a few things. So let's read the scripture and we'll build from there. Second Samuel 13 verse 1. NIV. He said, in the course of time, Amnon, the son of David, did what? Fell in love with Tamar. See, he fell in love. The beautiful sister of Absalom, son of son of David. In those days, it was still okay to marry your step sister. He said, Amnon became so what? Obsessed with his sister, Tama, that he made himself ill. He was sick. You know, if it's today, we just say, ah, no how, no how. This is not true. No. Hey, hey, yeah. Oh, well, uh, mm. Then what do we say? Because he's ill. Oh, there are many things you feel that is not love. It just looks like love. They are not love. The guy was growing lean. He was growing sick. He could not eat. He says it's love. So when I see him, I can't breathe well. I can't breathe well. It's asthma. It's asthma that is doing you. Asthma. Go and buy inhaler. So I'm not breathing well again. <laughs> he said he fell in love. So much obsessed that he, he made himself ill. He said she was a virgin and it seemed impossible for him to do anything to her. He said now, Amnon had an advisor named Jonadab. We always have one bad friend somewhere. You can't successfully fail. <laughs> Without a bad friend. I'm telling you, you can't successfully fail. He said he had a friend, you know, Jonadab was a very shrewd man. He asked Amnon, why do you, the king's son, look so haggard morning after morning? Uh -uh. That means this didn't last for a few days. They were seeing him was looking remorse, remorse, looking sober. They said, what's doing you? Won't you tell me? Amnon said to him, I am, I can't hear you. I am what? I'm in love with Tama. He said, I'm in love. Hey. Verse 5. The guy told him, look, I have a plan. He said, go to bed and pretend to be ill. Jonadab said, 
when your father comes to see you, tell him you want your son to come and make food for you. Go to verse 6. So Amnon laid down, pretended to be ill. When the king came to see him, he said, send my sister to come and make food for me. Verse 7. I'm just paraphrasing. Verse 7. David now sent word to Tamar at the palace to go to the house of his brother Amnon and prepare food for him. So Tamar went there and prepared the food. And Amnon was laying down. She took some dough, kneaded it, and made bread in his sight and baked it. Then she took the pan and served him the bread, but he refused to eat. He now sent, sent everyone out of here, Amnon said. So everyone left him. Verse 10. Then Amnon said to her, bring the food here into my bedroom so I may eat from your hand. And Tamar took the bread and sh- uh, that, uh, that she had prepared and brought it to her brother in his bedroom. But when she took it to him to eat, he grabbed her and said, come to bed. With me, my sister. Sister. Come to bed. Verse 12. No, my brother. <laughs> so if you didn't watch Tales by Moonlight, so you don't understand what I'm doing. No, my brother. She said to him, Don't force me. Such a thing should not be done in Israel. Don't do this wicked thing. What about me? Where could I get rid of my disgrace? And what about you? You will be like one of the wicked fools in Israel. Please speak to the king. He will not keep me from being married to you. But he refused to listen to her. <laughs> he said he refused to listen to her. And since he was stronger than she, he what? Raped her. Then Amnon hated her with what? Can you imagine see what happened? This is the guy that could not eat a few days ago. This is why I'm telling you. This is why you must learn about relationships, learn about marriage. Some people discover this thing inside marriage. This, thing, this shift that happened to this guy is inside marriage. It happens. I'm crazy about the girl. I'm married and find out who be this. Some people is in marriage. I'm telling you. This, so some people think when we do meetings like we're wasting our time. We know what we're addressing. This happens to people. Many people, it's happened to them, but it happened to them when they're already married with children. What you thought you have is not, it's not everything you are feeling that is love. Are you getting what I'm saying, guys? It's not everything you are feeling that is what? Love. This guy could not eat. This guy was obsessed. Everybody around him knew he was looking morose, looking lean, looking thin. Everybody saw him. He, he wasn't faking it. Everybody saw him, but it was not love. It was sexual attraction. It was sexual passion. There are many things that look like love that are not love. They just resemble love. The moment, and I tell ladies all the time, ladies, you must understand, a man's sexual passion is different from your own. You must understand it. When a man sleeps with you, the way he sees you changes. It changes drastically. Before he sleeps with you, you look like Canada. He can't wait to get there. <laughs> if you don't understand that joke, that's fine. <laughs> He looks like Canada to him. The moment he sleeps with you. What's the worst place in Nigeria? Somebody say, Ajegule, where is? Eh, Mushi, where is? You are the one saying it. Oh. What's your name? Let me, you are the one saying it. I'm, I didn't say it. Oh. You, from, you from Canada, you just suddenly look like the, the slum, the slum in Nigeria. And even him, listen, even him can't explain what is happening? He's not wickedness. Him too can't explain why he just hates you. This one, God is trying to teach young girls and young boys actually. God is trying to teach um, single people to keep sex out of it. Keeping sex out of it is one of the quickest things you know. You know somebody that really loves you. Sex confuses issues. See, see, see the problem? This guy wasn't a bad guy. He actually thought he was really in love. He was crazy. He was passionate. He was confused. He wasn't eating. He was going lean. He was saying, I'm going to Canada. I'm going to Canada. I'm going to Canada. The moment he landed the airport, he said, what am I doing here? Everything looked like a slum to him. He said he hated her with what? Intense. Not just ordinary hatred. Intense one. See what happened. First, what are we in? 15, Abby. Then he hated her with intense hatred. In fact, he hated her more. I love that. This is real life stories. He said, Amnon said to her, get up. Get out. Get up and get out. Get up and what? 
this is what the average man says to you when he sleeps with you. If he doesn't say it in those words, he says it in his heart. When you go, can't they go? Because sexual passion in men are, is way stronger than that of women. Women associate sex with love. Men do not. All this is biology and chemistry in the human being's body. Okay. So get out of here. See verse 16. She said, no. She said to him, sending me away will be greater wrong than, that, than what you have already done to me. <laughs> but he refused to what? This is the second time we're hearing he refused to listen to her. Very important because we play in our message. He said, he called his personal servant, his PA, and said, get this woman out of my sight and bolt the door after her. Can you imagine? He said, get her out of here and jammed it. He hated her so much, he couldn't even stand her. Hmm. So the servant put her out and bolted the door after her. She was wearing an omelet, uh, uh, another story. Baseline. He moved from what he thought was love to intense hatred. So how do you know somebody really loves you? Because a lot of things people feel is not love. And I'm going to run through six things for the guys, six things for the girls. The seventh one for both of them is the same thing. So that's why I'm going to do put that seventh one together at the end. They are the same thing. But six for men, six for women. Let me start for the women now. I'm going to tell you how to know if a guy loves you. Six things. Number one. Number one. If a guy likes you, he will pay attention to you. He will actually listen to you. Do you remember how many times he didn't listen to her was mentioned in that story? Did anybody notice it? It was mentioned significantly two times there. That she said something and he didn't listen to her. She said this one and he didn't listen to her. Usually when a guy loves you, he listens to you. If he can't pay attention, if he doesn't have your time, if he, if he can't listen to you, 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 whatever you say never counts, then he doesn't love you. For men, attention is a very scarce commodity for men. Unlike women that can do more than one thing at the same time easily, men cannot. So a man's attention is one of the ways you know what he values. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? A man's attention is one of the ways you know what he what? Values. If he's not paying attention to you, not listening to you, if he claims he doesn't have time for you, he doesn't love you. The biggest thing, lie, men tell women that they no longer want to have something with is I am busy. That's it. That's how to know he has broken up with you. You know, and women in their nature, they like closure. Women like to know. Tell me exactly. My sister, I'm now telling you. That's what he means by I'm busy. Don't wait for more disgrace than that. You to form busy and be going from there. Don't say, no, you must tell me what you mean. What you, what, what you mean again like how? I'm busy. I'm busy. When men say I'm busy, they are really busy. Because you see a guy, he, 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 oh, when he was chasing you and tossing you, he was texting you every day, 24 hours, calling you every day, taking you out every day. The moment he gets what he's looking for, he jumps to I'm busy. How did he become suddenly busy? He's busy with another person. I'll let that one sink. Attention. Does he pay attention? Does he listen to you? Does he listen to you? Can you actually get him to listen? Get him to do things? Does he pay attention to what bothers you? To what is important to you? Does he pay attention? If he doesn't pay attention to you, he doesn't love you. Very important. We saw it in that story. And he didn't listen to her. Number two. If a guy loves you, he'll be willing to wait for sex. He will be willing to wait to push sex aside till a real commitment of marriage. If a guy loves you, he's willing to wait. A guy that is impatient about sex usually is in love with sex and not in love with you. You see, when a guy really loves you, he understands that this relationship is a long-term thing. So sex or no sex, it will still happen one day. But when he has short-term plans, he has targeted how far he wants to invest. And you are trying to, by telling him no sex, you are trying to drag him to invest longer than he's planning. 
don't know if you guys know what I'm saying. In his mind, he has said, Max, two weeks. We could not reach there. Then you are saying, eh, let's wait till marriage. He said, ah, <laughs> you are spoiling his plans. So a guy that is impatient usually doesn't love you. Because there's no long-term plan. If he loves you and you tell him that, hey, let's honor God sexually, he would appreciate that. Because he understands that you are something precious. He understands that there's no issue. It's long last, last, we will still get married. He understands that. He will value you for even waiting. But a guy that doesn't, he can't wait. He will be threatening you. If he don't sleep with me, I will sleep with other people. And you see, as stupid as that is, there are ladies that don't understand that message. If a guy is telling you that if you don't sleep with other people, it's not because he loves you. He's telling you he loves sex. He has no respect for you. But there are many ladies that will still be asking me in that situation. I say, Pastor, what should I do? Somebody has told you that if you don't sleep with him, he will be free to go and sleep with other people. Doesn't that show you he has not, you are nothing special to him? Somebody getting what I'm saying? If a guy really loves you, he will be okay with putting sex aside. Because this is a long-term thing. It's not a rush thing. There's a story in the Bible of Jacob. Jacob saw, um, he was living with his, 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 his uncle. And he wanted to marry one of the uncle's daughter. A very pretty one. But was, she was the younger one. So he came to meet the man and said, I want to marry your daughter. The man said, okay, the bride price is seven years of hard labor. Jacob said, I love this woman. I will be able to pay. So he worked for seven years to marry the woman. Not to, he didn't touch her. In those days, you dare not. They were stoning you to death. Seven years he worked to marry this girl. When a guy really loves you, he will be patient. When a guy he loves you, he will be ready to wait. A guy that can't wait doesn't love you sex he loves. And most girls are, are so ignorant. They don't realize. Anybody sleeping with you before marriage will have problems also staying faithful inside marriage. Every adulterer is a, I mean, every fornicator is an adulterer in training. Self-control doesn't end when you marry. You need self-control before you marry. You need self-control after you marry. Many people are short-circuiting the course. They let just have sex. If I have sex with him, he'll be faithful. That, that's how women think. But you know, you don't understand. If you have sex with him, you are teaching him that it's okay to get to take what is not yours. That's what you are teaching him. Because intention to marry you is not marriage. If you go to a shop and say, I want to buy, that's an intent, that's offer to buy. That's not marriage. And somebody get what I'm saying? Can you go somewhere and say, I want to buy this car? They say, okay, then you take care and drive it away. You want to buy this car? No problem, we are here. When you buy it, you can drive it. But many women, they just said, I want to marry you. Yes, you open your clothes. You have taught him that it's okay to take what is not legally yours. By the time you marry him, guess what he's going to do? He will continue trying to take something that is not legally his. And that's not you. You are his. He's trying to take something else. Because that's the training he has received from you. Most cases that involve ad adultery, most of them, check it, 99.9% .9 of them, both of them were cheating before they got married. Then the girl just thought, now that we're married, let's stop the cheating. <laughs> we will continue. This relationship started with cheating. To continue with cheating. Na last, last, now cheating. Go and down. Ladies, are you listening? Guys, you two, are you listening? Yeah, because you think you're smart now. Say, God has said, don't touch each other before you marry. You, you both plan. Let's cheat. This is the system. Then you now enter married. How can arm robbers be making pledge? We're arm robbers. We don't trust anybody ourselves. And if you get what I'm saying, you are both cheaters now. So why should I stop cheating now because we have married? Why? Why? Somebody get what I'm saying? So, practice, if you can't be, if you can't have self-control now, you won't have it in marriage. Marriage doesn't change anybody. A lizard that is single doesn't become alligator in marriage. Same person you'll be. So, Jacob worked for seven years. After the seven years, wedding day came. They brought the so-called wife. She was wearing a veil. He made the vow. Married again. Got home. Opened the veil. Find out it was the elder sister that was not as fine as the younger sister. He said, hey, what happened? It's the younger one I want. The father said, in our culture, we don't marry younger sister first. That's why we give you the older sister. He said, ah, no problem. I still want the younger sister. They said, you work another seven years. Jacob waited and worked for 14 years. That's how to know somebody that loves somebody. 14 years to marry that woman. 
Some of you are with men that can't wait for 14 minutes. How much more 14 days? And you think it's you he loves. It's not you he loves. It's sex he loves. It has nothing to do with you. After he has you, he will look for another person. If he loves you, he will be willing to put sex aside. Number three. If he loves you, he will be glad and quick to introduce you to people that matter. If a guy like, really likes you, one of the things you will notice is that he's very proud of you. Very proud of introducing you to the people that matter. I understand he might not post your picture everywhere in the world. I understand he might not make public announcement on Todd Milan Bridge or on Billboard. I understand that. Because some people can form that they are private. However, you can't be so private that nobody in this world knows. That one is Camo. My sister. That one is what? Scam. Because some girls, they see, they see scope, some girls that scoped it today. That you see, I mean, <laughs> you know, I have haters. <laughs> You know, 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 <laughs> we, are, we are, we are big, <laughs> we are public people, we can't show ourselves like that. My brother, marriage is not a private affair. Both of you can marry on that chair. I guess what I'm saying? Don't let anybody deceive you. Marriage is a very public issue. All of us go see no last, last. Won't you have children in that marriage? Will you hide everything? Marriage is a public issue. So yes, he might not make a public newspaper announcement. However, the important people in his life must at least know. If he has haters, at least his parents are not his haters. His pastor is not part of the haters. His mentors or boss in office is not part of him. The important people at least must know. If he's hiding you from everybody, you are not the only one. That's why he can't show you anywhere. <laughs> and in these 20 something years I've been doing this job, I keep teaching girls this thing and some of them still don't get it. So I'm supposed to ask my cousin, Pastor, there's this guy. He's a celebrity. He's a publicity. He's a... <laughs> all these many things. He can't tell anybody. I say, nobody at all. No, say nobody. He said we must not tell anybody. I say, he's coming you. Then two weeks after, three or one month after, she will come back and say, he has broken up. I say, of course, he has broken up. You were, the, you were dating yourself. He was never dating you. If the guy is hiding you from the important people, his parents, his pastors, his boss, his mentors, important people in his life, you need to at least know you. Important people of, of integrity, not his drunkard friends. Because those ones are part of the scam. <laughs> They're going to call you our wife. <laughs> They're going to send you errand. Pepper soup today. Jalof rice tomorrow. They all know that you are not the one. Don't mind those boys. Oh. Those boys are not safe though. Our wife. You're not, ah. They're going to look at, look at yourself. Say, see this fool. This is not a fool. Our wife. You're going to laugh. They say, what are, you cooking? what are you cooking for us this weekend? You two going to phone busy. This weekend, we are eating stale fried rice. Shrimp. <laughs> those boys are wicked. <laughs> you got a phone busy. They stir fried rice, shrimp, different. <laughs> you they cook for your mind. You don't see us, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm talking about people of integrity and respect in his life, not his friends. Oh. His friends can be part of this camel. Oh. Most times, his friends knows the other girls, and they are all trying to decide. They always have meeting. And conference to choose who are who is scoring points. They are all choosing. So the people eating your stir fried rice. If you if you see whether they talk about you for the election, <laughs> so that one thing because she's cooking for us. She think because she's cooking for us we will vote her. Don't marry her. No leave food, she shall be. And then they eat your food. <laughs> is somebody getting what I'm saying? If he's hiding you, he's scamming you. If he's hiding you, he is what? He's scamming you. So if he loves you, he'll be glad to introduce you to important people in his life. When I first met my wife and was in a relationship, the first thing I did was I took her to my mentors, Reverend Sam Ademir and Victor Ademir and Pastor Femi Oduwale, and I introduced her to them. I said, I told her she's even free to report me if I misbehave at any time. So that must be there. Number one. Number four. When he really loves you, he will be protective of you. 
he'll be protective of you. When a guy loves you, one of the things you'll notice is that he's very protective of you. This means he would, he would not abuse you. He's very protective of your well-being, your welfare. Any guy that is constantly abusing you now, he will beat you in marriage. Constantly threatening you now. He doesn't love you. When he loves you, he'll be protective of you. He will protect you from, your, from, from his own in-laws. I mean, from his parents. Protect you from his siblings. He will protect you. Not the one that is throwing you like, like, like a lamb amongst wolves. For his sisters to terrorize you. For his parents to terrorize you. He will protect you. I remember the first. <laughs> you know, throughout, throughout my marriage, I've had to do those things for my wife. Because you, you, you don't. First time she came to visit me. My mother-in-law. No, no, no. Sorry, my mother. Her mother-in-law then, my mother. You know, so my mother was in the house. Or my mother came to meet us in the house. And my mother, you know, saw that we were talking in the parlor. And my mother later now told her that, ah, is your mother not at home? Now, millennials don't understand that. Millennials don't understand that. But for mature people here, when a woman of the man you came to visit is asking you about your mother that she doesn't know, what she's saying is that you don't get anything to do for for house. You know, millennials don't have to explain to millennials. But millennials might think it's greeting. Say, no, she's not at home. No, no, no. That's not, it's not a, uh, <laughs> it's a rhetorical question. There's no answer to the question. The answer to the question is carry your purse and your shoe and go and help your mother home. So my mother said that and I was very upset. So when I took her to the bus stop or whatever, I took her home, I can't remember. So when I came back, ah, I told my mother, don't ever, don't ever, ever, don't try it. See, those of you, you must understand something. Your, your parents sometimes are emotionally bounded to you. So they, they become emotionally territorial to you. They, 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 they don't even mean bad. They are just dealing with separation anxiety. So your mother, some of you don't have children, so you don't understand. Me, as I'm here, I'm already thinking of where my children will grow. They are not, they're not grown. The oldest one is eight years old. I'm already saying, so one day, they won't need me again. They'll be going to their house. Because I'm so used to coming home and meeting them. I'm so used to they coming home from school and meeting me. I'm, they're always in my room. I'm used to it. So I'm picturing that one day, I'll be calling them and say, Mommy, I'm, I'm, I'm busy. Come here, my friend! Tell me what? Come on, stay here. So, it, 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 it's separation anxiety. It's going to happen. A time will come, your children are not going to need you. They only talk to you. Some of you know how, 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 how rarely you call your parents. Sometimes once a month. The men, you know, once a year. <laughs> it's your parents that call you. They don't call you, don't talk to them. Am I correct? It's the women that even try to call once more. So imagine, you, imagine that. So a time will come. These children that are with you 24 hours every day. A time will come. They will grow. Have their own friends. Have their own phone. Have their own life. So some parents become very protective. So unconsciously, they start you know, defending territory emotionally. So any man, any, any, no matter the woman, the man, the son brings, they'll say she's not good enough. So if a man really loves you, one of the things he must be willing to do is protect you. He must be willing to tell his parents, tell whoever cares, listen, that this is the person I want to marry. You are not at liberty to harass her. You are not at liberty to do that. So I have to have that serious talk with my mom. You can't do that. And even when we got married, it took about eight years before we had our first biological child. In that course of eight years, nobody had the liberty to come and tell her rubbish. You know, there are some families like that. If there's even two years delay, you will see the sister-in-law, mother-in-law, come and say, mm, come and sit down. Knee down in the middle here. I'm telling you, in this Nigeria, you will knee down. And all the aunties and uncles, everybody sit down and say, hmm. When we're talking to you, put your hand down. They will need your wife in front of them. <laughs> Those things can never happen. If the guy knows his onions. No. It's not our wife, please. It's my wife. Maintain space, please. You get what I'm saying? Whenever they want to shoot bullets at that woman, you are the one that should stand there. Because they can't shoot their own. Don't push her in front. and say, go answer, mama. No, you answer. I get what I'm saying? If your mother-in-law is always disturbing your, your fiancé or your wife, if she anytime he calls, you pick the phone. Yes, mama, how can I help you? And you change your tone. I get what I'm saying? Basically, I'm just saying be protective 
when the guy really loves you, he will be protective of you. He himself won't be the one battering you and, and, and pulling down your self-esteem and verbally insulting you and physically insulting you. If a guy is beating you, you are still asking, what should you do? Say, Pastor, my boyfriend slapped me. What should I do? I say, come make I slap you. That slap never do you. What should you do like how? If he's slapping you now that you're already dating, he will kill you in marriage. Somebody got what I'm saying? Because in marriage, something called sephini enters. In English, it's called sephini. Sephini <laughs> enters. So if he does it, <laughs> I just mix up. See, if, 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 he's, if he's threatening you now, in marriage, he can kill you because then he's already tired of you. See, finish has entered. He can kill you. Hallelujah. So, protection. Number what? I mean, let me try and round up the man. Five. If he loves you, one of the things you notice is that he will include you in his future plans. He will include you in what? Future plans. So, ladies, when a guy, how do you know a guy loves you? Be listening to him when he's talking about his future. If he's saying I, instead of we, my sister, you are not in his future. If he's saying, I would like to live in Aja, I would like to live in Lekki, and you are dating, is he saying I? He's not saying we will live in Lekki. He's saying I will live in Lekki. That means you are not in that future. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. I will like my children to attend so and so school. Ah! And you are dating. He didn't say our children. He said my children. <laughs> you are not the mother of the children. Just in case you don't know. Does he include you in the future plans? They say, I would like to live abroad. It's all we will like. Find out. Is he, is he including you in his future plans? Because men are very forward oriented. They are very future minded. If he's not including you in the future plans, and if he's not sharing his future plans with you, one of the ways you know a guy loves you is that he's always quick to share his future plans with you. If you don't know anything about his future, then he doesn't love you. He's still coding. I've seen people that they are dating. The guy is preparing documents to travel. She doesn't know. Ah, you are not in his future. It's the day before he travels. Some said the guy will travel. They now call you and say, hey baby, I'm in Canada. And the girl will ask me, so pastor, what should I do? I said, my sister, if he can plan traveling, his whole family were part of it. And none of them told you. Hmm? They have all agreed. You are not the one. They've all agreed. So watch out for that. And number what? Six. If he loves you, he will be willing to invest in the health of that relationship. When a guy loves you, one of the things you will notice is that he's willing to invest in the health and well-being of that relationship. He'll make investments. So this will include, he'll be okay with coming for seminars like this. Some of you now, guys are here. It's a woman that brought you. She said, you must follow me. If you don't follow me, we won't marry. And you are here. And I'm talking about you. Present. Don't, don't laugh. Just look straight. They won't know it's you. You don't normally like to come for things like this. But she get told you that. Let's go. Follow me now, please. And you follow her. You like her. Marry her. <laughs> I'm joking. You don't marry because of that. Oh. Look at it, broad, broader than that. But basically, I'm saying, if a guy really likes you, one of the things you notice is that he's willing to invest in the health of that relationship. So he wants to attend seminars with you. He won't mind going for counseling with you. When he really loves you, he's okay. That, if, if, if he's not even scared of that goes to church, if he really likes you, I say, let's go to church. He will follow you. He's ready to invest in the well-being of that relationship. It's one of the ways to know. Because men are not naturally relational. Most of them are, might not be. So, but when, when they see somebody they really like, they start reading relationship books, they start listening to messages, you know, those things. Because now, there's one lady that is disturbing them to do so. Alright? So, I'll do six here. I'll do six for the women now. Then, the seventh one is the same for both men and women.